Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at a problem working depreciation using the units of production. We have previously worked the same numbers using the straight line method, the double declining method, and now we'll move on and compare and contrast the units of production method. We'll be using the same numbers, these numbers over here, we'll plug them into this worksheet here and calculate the depreciation. We will then put them into this worksheet that will show the depreciation per year, being four years in this case and we will calculate of the book value so we can see it all in one place then we'll see the journal entry then we want to see what the journal entry will do to the trial balance within context of other accounts so we're going to drill down on the depreciation calculation in this case so we're going to have the units of production method we have the same starting data being Equipment cost here uh, being the 257 estimated salvage value 20,000. What is salvage value? That's what we believe the equipment will be worth at the end of the useful life. What is the useful life? In this case, four years. Useful life being how long we believe this product or this equipment will be in service for for us. And at the end of it, even if it's totally scrapped, um, if it's like a forklift or something like that, we believe that we can scrap it for something. So it still has value even though it may not be in use or we're estimating that it will not be in use after that four year time period. That value being the salvage value of 20,000. So now we have the estimated units of production over the useful life of the equipment. Now this is not data that we used for the prior methods. This is data that we will use for the units of production method. Note that if we're able to applied depreciation in this way it might be more accurate similar to if we were to depreciate a car it might be more accurate for us to depreciate based on the mileage driven rather than how old the car is that could be a more accurate way and usually most people would think that it would be but of course then you would have to track the miles you'd have to know how many miles you believe the car will drive in the beginning and then uh, track how many miles has been driven and calculate the depreciation or decline in the value in that way. In this case, we're going to attempt to do that. We're going to see what this machine does. What it does is it produces units of goods. So we're going to say it produces over its life, we're going to make 400, 475,000 estimated units with this machine. That's the life of the machine similar to a time frame of the machine if we were to say it's going to live for four years. Now, in, in this case, we happen to uh, be in the same four-year period, but we don't need to know it's going to live for four years necessarily. We just need to know uh, the total amount of units, in this case, that will be produced. And then it's going to give us the units per year. We're going to have to count them. First year has 220 units, then second year 224, 6, and then third year 221, 8, and fourth 15, 2. And we do not want to go below, once again, the salvage value being the 20,000. So let's see how we can calculate using the units of production. We're going to start off with the same cost, that cost being 257.5. That is the first number in our problem. Then we're going to subtract out the salvage value. I'm going to say less. Uh, I'll type it out so that we can see it is a subtraction prob problem. And that will be 20,000. And if we subtract that out, that will give us the amount that will be depreciated over the useful life. I'm going to try to use our underlines here. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to the home tab. We're going to go to the fonts. I'm going to go to the underline. I'm going to single underline that to show that we're going to do a subtraction problem. I'm going to do the problem with a formula by selecting the equal sign, pointing to the 257.5 minus, then pointing to the 20,000 and enter. So that means that over the useful life, we will depreciate 237.5 bringing the value from the cost of this down by 237.5 which will leave us with an ending value of 20 being the salvage value that we can scrap it for. And then we're going to divide that by the estimated unit of production. So I'm going to indicate that with the slash being the dividing from the computer and it's going to be the estimated useful life for the for units produced over the life of this product and we're going to get that here. So over the life of the machine, it's going to produce 475,000 units. We're going to divide that out. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Home tab, Font Group, underline that. And that will give us then the depreciation per unit. 
So once again, I'm going to indicate that with the equal sign here, depreciation per unit, and I'm going to divide that out by selecting the equal sign, pointing to the 237.5 amount to be depreciated over the life, divided by the number of units that will be produced over the life, and enter. And note that we have a decimal here. It's, uh, that basically means it's going to be 50 cents per unit. And the reason it has a decimal and these do not is because if we went to the home tab and we went to the numbers group, we added decimals to this cell. If it does not show decimals, oftentimes you want to play with the number of decimals there to see if the number is rounded or not within Excel. All right, so now that we have that, it's a pretty sim simple calculation in order for us to calculate the depreciation per year. We're going to start off with the units that will be produced in year one, and they're going to have to give us that. If we're using units of production, they will have to provide that in the problem. In this case, we're going to put produce, or we have produced, 220,000 units in year one. So we're just going to type in 220,000, and then we're going to multiply that times the depreciation per unit. So I'm going to instigate, of course, the times with the asterisk here, and then we're going to put our cursor over here and the depreciation per unit. That's what we calculated to be 50 cents per unit. I'm going to just click on that, and there's the 50 cents. Once again, it's rounded. Note that the cell reference here or the cell type format is different than this cell, and that is because it is showing decimals. All right, and then we're going to multiply that out. So that will equal depreciation for the year one. So I'm going to put my cursor in C68 and say equals and point to the 220,000 times the 50 cents per uh, unit being produced. That means we're going to depreciate it by 110,000. If we put that information into our table up here, it would look like this. The depreciation for year one is going to equal the 110,000. Then we're going to calculate the book value. So the book value is calculated by the cost. The cost being the 257.5. That's what we paid for it. Does not change. And then we're going to subtract from that the accumulated depreciation, the depreciation over the, t the life of the machine up to this point, which is just one year. So it's the same as the depreciation in this case. We're going to subtract that out. So I'm going to select equals point to the cost, the 257.5 minus the accumulated depreciation 110 and enter. That'll give us a book value of 147.5. Let's look at that in terms of a journal entry. Remember that in prior classes, we have seen the journal entry in the adjusting process, but the book has given us that number. Now we're calculating that number and let's put it into the same journal entry that we would do in the prior classes being that this will be our trial balance for year one. We just have a couple numbers so that we can see this within context. We got the assets in green. We've got the equipment, which of course is on the books now of the 257.5. That's how much we paid for the equipment. We've got our liabilities here and the equity and income and minus the depreciation being the only expense that we will be using here so that we can see the effect on net income. The debits minus the credits are zero, and we're assuming income of 100,000 being a credit of 100,000. So if we record the depreciation then, the depreciation be 110, and we will then credit uh, 110. The effect on the financial statements then, the depreciation expense will go up, cumulative depreciation will go up in the credit direction. The book value now of the equipment, it's on the books of what we bought it for, less the accumulated depreciation, the debit minus the credit, is the book value 147.5, which is what we calculated over here. The depreciation expense is 110, and note that gives us a loss of 10,000 here. Now, if we compared that to the prior formats in the double declining, we have a larger loss in the double declining, and in the straight line, we actually had a gain on the income. So this is kind of in the middle, in reality, we don't really know where this is going to be because it just really depends on uh, how much we use the machine from year to year. It is a logical assumption that we would use it and it would be more efficient in the first years than in later years. So it may be a bit front-loaded in a similar fashion as the double declining method. So now we're going to calculate the same for year two. It's going to be the exact same calculation. So we're going to have the units uh, for year two. And how many did we produce? They're going to have to give it to us. It's the two, uh, 124, 6, 124, 6. Just like in your car, we're just going to count that. If we were going to count the mileage for the year in the car, we're just going to count the uh, 
number of units that were produced and that we're going to multiply that times the depreciation per unit which is 50 percent 50 cents which we calculated up here so 50 cents and then that will equal the depreciation oops, say that will equal depreciation for year two so I'm going to multiply that out so I'm in cell C72 I'm going to say equals the 124.6 times the 50 cents per unit and depreciation for year two 62.3 so same idea up here we're going to put that into our worksheet so for year two we have depreciation that we have now calculated of 62.3 the cost is the same the cost has not changed so the cost is 257.5 that's what we pay for it the accumulated depreciation now is the accumulated depreciation over the life. So that's going to be the prior year's depreciation, accumulated depreciation, I should say, plus the current year's depreciation expense. So it's going to equal the prior year's accumulated depreciation. That's where we stand before this year, plus the depreciation expense. We can also think of it as all the depreciation expense over the life, which, of course, is the same number of 172.3. Then we're going to subtract out. We're going to calculate the book value by saying this equals the cost, 257.5 minus, I'm going to point to the accumulated depreciation, 172.3 and enter book value 85.2, which of course has gone down from the prior year because it has depreciated in value. If we're going to take a look at our journal entry over here, then we are now moving from year one to year two. Notice what happens when we move from year one to year two. We're going to assume that the net income of loss in this case has closed out to the capital account. So now the capital account consists of all the blue numbers, the beginning capital plus uh, revenue less the expenses are in this number. We're going to assume that we made another 100000 in the second year. So this isn't the same 100000 This is another 100000 that we assume we earned in year two. We have currently on the books the uh, 257.5 and the accumulated depreciation of 110, we're going to have the same journal entry being the expense is going to go up by, in this case, the 62.3 that we calculated, and the accumulation, accumulated depreciation will be credited by the 62.3 in this case. Credits are being represented with brackets, and if we take a look at that, then we have the cost being the same, the amount that we have accumulated depreciation being the 172.3 now, going up from the 110 by the 62.3. That means that the book value is a net debit of 85.2, which equals our book value over here on our table. And we can see that the depreciation is 62.3. We can see that the depreciation went down, which means that net income actually went up. So we had a loss last year, and now we have a gain of 37.7. And once again, that depreciation is being calculated based on the number of units that are being produced. So now let's take a look at the third year. So we're going to have the same calculation for year three. So we're going to have the units produced in year three. And they're going to have to give us that. So that's going to be the 121.8. 121.8. And then we're going to have times the depreciation per unit. And so that will be the same number. That's going to be the 50 cents per unit. And that will equal the depreciation for year three. So we're going to multiply that out. I'm in cell C76. We're going to say equals. We're going to point to the 121.8 units produced in year three times the 50 cents per unit. Year three has 60,900 that we will then depreciate. I'm going to go ahead and put that into our table up top. So depreciation for year three now is going to be this 60,009 and enter. So we can see that depreciation is going down. It went down slightly from this year to the next. Then we're going to say the cost is going to be the same. That does not change. That's what we bought it for. The accumulated depreciation could then be the prior year's accumulated depreciation plus the current year's depreciation expense, or you can think of it as the sum of all depreciation over the life up until this time being 233.2. Then we're going to subtract this out to calculate the book value. The book value is calculated as 257.5 less the uh, 233.2, 2, 
or the cost less the accumulated depreciation, giving a book value of $24,300. All right, so we're going to post that out once again to our